Welcome to 4 Kids Sunday School! Our big picture question for this unit is why did Jesus perform miracles? Jesus performed miracles to glorify God, to show he is the Son of God, and to care for people. Let's watch our Bible story to learn more. Jesus' disciples had been hard at work. They had been healing people and teaching them. So many people came and went that the disciples did not even have time to eat. So Jesus said to them, Come with me. Let's go to a quiet place where we can be alone and get some rest. Jesus and his disciples got into a boat to cross the Sea of Galilee. But many people saw them leaving. The people traveled by foot and they ran ahead of Jesus. When Jesus and his disciples got to the shore, the people were already there waiting for them. Jesus saw the crowd and he cared about them because they were like sheep who needed a shepherd. So Jesus taught the people many things about God's kingdom and he healed people who were sick. By this time, it was late in the day. Jesus' disciples came to him and said, we are out in the middle of nowhere and it's getting late. Tell the people to go away so they can go to the farms and villages to buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus said, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. Jesus' disciples were confused. We can't feed this many people, they said. It would cost a whole year's pay to buy enough bread for them to eat, Philip said. Jesus asked, how many loaves of bread do you have? Go look. Jesus' disciple Andrew said, A boy here has five loaves and two fish, but what good will that do for so many people? Jesus told the disciples to instruct everyone to sit down. So all the people sat down in big groups on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves of bread and the two fish. He looked up to heaven. And then he blessed the bread. He broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples. He also divided up the fish. The disciples passed out the food to the people and everyone ate until they were full. Then Jesus told the disciples to collect any leftover food. The disciples collected 12 baskets full of pieces of bread and fish. Jesus fed about 5,000 men that day, plus women and children. By feeding the 5,000, Jesus provided for the physical needs of the crowd. The next day, Jesus called himself the bread of life. Only Jesus is able to satisfy our souls forever by providing forgiveness, peace with God, and eternal life. summarize our Bible story for today, Jesus and his disciples worked hard teaching and healing people. They crossed the Sea of Galilee to rest, but the crowds followed them. When it got late, the people were hungry. Jesus miraculously fed a crowd with five loaves and two fish. Our story point for today is that Jesus miraculously fed a crowd with five loaves and two fish. To start your discussion at home about this Bible story, here are some questions. What do you think Jesus' disciples felt about the crowd of people? How did Jesus feel about the crowd of people? How can our souls be satisfied? And for the older kids, you can also answer, what do you do when faced with a problem too big for you to solve? Describe a time when you had to wait on Jesus to meet a need and what role can your family play in providing for the needs of others? Go ahead and hit pause so you can discuss. Okay, let's continue with our section about questions from kids. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Autumn from Tulsa, Oklahoma asks, if Jesus meets our needs, why do some people not have enough to eat? 
Autumn, that's a fantastic question, a difficult one, because we know that God has promised to meet needs, but at times we see people who, you know, maybe are homeless or who are hungry, and we have to ask, how do these kind of align? Well, let me kind of answer this a little bit uh, because it's a really challenging one, but let me kind of speak to a couple ideas that are, are baked into this question. The first thing is this, we have to differentiate between what is a want and a need. I think sometimes that's kind of a problem that we assume that wants are actually needs and they're not. And God does not promise to give us our wants all the time, just our needs. So that's the first part. The second part is this, that we have to look at this over the, the long term. Um, there may be somebody who goes without a meal and is hungry, and we can say, well, God's not meeting that person's needs, right? But then God provides for that need the next day and they have food to eat. So you have to look at the longer term as well. Another aspect is this, that God has promised to meet needs and he chooses to use the church to meet a lot of those needs. So a lot of this, is, this should cause us to care deeply about stepping in to other people's lives and recognizing there are people who are hungry in our towns. And God has given us resources to help meet those needs. Are we being faithful? Are we giving generously? Are we serving? Are we spending time helping um, at, at, a, a, at a soup kitchen, for example, that is there to help meet the needs of people who don't have money right now? And so there are a lot of things going on here in terms of those practical needs. But the bigger idea here, the, the idea that we can be a little bit more clear on is this. The greatest need we have is not food or a place to live. The greatest need we have is Jesus. And God has completely met that need by giving us Jesus to provide salvation for us when we trust in him. That is our greatest need, and that need is available for anyone who calls on him. And so we have to remember that as well. As we seek to meet the physical needs of people, the greater thing we need to do is make sure we are stepping in to share Christ so their greater spiritual need can be met. So here's a question back for you to consider. What needs will you trust Jesus to meet? Our verse for this unit is Psalm 40, verse 5. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. For our song time today, we have three songs. The memory verse song that we've been working on, and then two from Forsy Kids Camp this week, Love Theory and Every Move I Make. Go ahead and stand up so you can dance along.
brothers and sisters <laughs> I want to welcome you back to life Back to the one That can make your next chapter Your best chapter Hallelujah How can it be That you love the most
As we close our time together in prayer, thank God for what you have learned. Encourage each family member to share one thing they are grateful to God for and one thing they would like to ask God for. And take a few minutes to consider who else your family can pray for, especially those who do not know Jesus. Go ahead and hit pause so you have time to pray. Thanks for being with us for Sunday School again. We hope you guys have a great week.